Happy Thanksgiving! Yes, food! It's great stuff. Um, this is elementary, and may I say that Thursday nights feel really bare, especially after no Criminal Minds on Wednesday, no Bones, no Blacklist tonight, just elementary, and even on Tuesday, only NCIS, no Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so this, <laughs> this week has been very, very few reviews to do. Um, but yeah, this is Elementary, episode four, the fourth season, and one of the things that I love about this show is, first of all, the opening, or not the opening, the uh, the little theme song they do, and it shows the, the little marble rolling around, and I I don't know if if you do watch this show, hopefully by now you've already picked up on the the metaphor it's symbolizing that the ball is like logic and it just keeps moving and keeps moving and everything's going on around it but logic stays true um at least of course that that's my opinion that's what it seems like it's trying to say because it starts off rolling and then it goes and goes and all this stuff happens around it at the end the bad guy gets caught but the logic keeps going um because that's the one thing that Sherlock Holmes always counts on is the logic and this is another great episode to show that um one of my biggest complaints about a lot of the cases on Bones, which if you don't watch the show, obviously you don't know what I'm talking about, but a lot of my problems with it involve the fact that this clue leads to that clue, which leads to that clue, which leads to that clue, which leads to a dead end. And then it, it's something all the way over there that they weren't even close to that ends up being the reason for the crime. In this show, it's always this clue leads to that clue, which leads to that clue. Well, that's that's a dead end, but they get another clue, which may end up being something, and it connects back to this clue, and those two clues come together, make another clue, which leads to this clue, and it's all, like I said, just, in, just like in the beginning, the logic's always flowing forward. You know, it's always, even when it hits a dead end, it changes direction. You know, it's like a detour almost. It's going straight and then detour, but it's still going forward. And not many crime shows do that. A lot of the time, they follow one lead until it hits a dead end. Then they follow a different lead until it hits a dead end. Then they follow a different lead, and then that's the reason. Um, and in, in the case of Bones, it's always like, oh, well, this guy had his organs chopped out and sold, so that must be the reason. Somebody wanted his organs. No, never mind. It was some guy that... You know, he, he <laughs> either it's an affair or his assistant, like, wanted to kill him for some reason. I don't know. It, it's always like they follow this line of logic that half the time isn't even remotely connected to how or why they died. It's just something to take up the whole episode until at the very end they're just like, oh, yeah, that's, that's who killed him and this is why. It had nothing to do with that. Um but like I said, in this case, first of all, they're talking about the uh, the fact that she's living with two other guys. They're all married to, to each other. And before that, she was in another house, and they were all married to each other, and there were like six of them. Um, and of course, you know, at first it's like, well, maybe that has something to do with it. Um, but in the end, it leads to, first, first they find out about her husband, they find out about this guy, and they're like, oh, they're having an affair. And they find out they're together, find out she's been in another house before that. So they go there, and they're talking to them. There's one woman that seems like, well, maybe she's the one. Well, they get some information from her that clears her, but it leads to something else. It's a guy doing stem cell research. They find out that she came uh, to his lab to do some blood tests. They find out that it's been burned down, so somebody, you know, wanted something hidden. They find out, they find that uh, they can find what happened to the stuff and possibly get um, some blood, which leads them to this cancer support group, which leads them to a guy who yelled at her, which leads them to ultimately the case-breaking uh, clue, which is, you know, the woman who doesn't have cancer but her husband told this lady that she had cancer and whenever she met this woman that's how she found out so it all connected together and it all led to the culprit you know that's 
you don't see that very often in crime shows. I mean, it's just you just follow lead after lead until eventually one pans out, and then that's that. <laughs> that's how it ends. This case, it just shows what's so great about this show. Um, how all clues just it's always logic it's always logic moving forward I love it um, so the case obviously very good um, but also I I really really like what's happening with Watson right now uh, there's this lady cop looking into her and at first she's just like did Joan do something bad uh, but you come to find out that this cop was friends with the cop who's going to take over for Gregson, I think, in the last season. It's been a while since I've seen that season, but I'm pretty sure. I, I can't remember exactly what had happened. But Gregson was going to get a promotion. This woman was stepping up into his position, and Watson had uh, looked into her past to find out if this lady was, um, like, if she was who she says she was. And uh, ultimately find out that... You know, yes, she's clean, she's good, but Gregson says, I, I don't want the promotion yet, so he doesn't take it, he stays in his position. And so, oh, this cop, uh, Watson finds out, is close friends with this woman, and she thinks, well, maybe she blames me for her not getting the job. She shows her all the information she found, and says, you know, Gregson decided he didn't want to leave, it's not my fault she didn't get the position, uh, and... She she finally reveals why she's uh, looking into her because she tosses it on the ground. She's like, it's the fact that you were even looking why I'm pissed. Um, and it, that that is her reasoning because she feels like Watson's not a cop, so she has no right to be looking into him because they already get looked into by politicians and other cops and you know higher ups stuff like that. And so she feels like Watson has no right. You kind of understand, but at the same time, she's such a jerk about it. Like, telling Watson that she doesn't even belong here, all that stuff. That It just, I don't know, it made me want to punch her in the face. Like, she was just being so condescending about it. Like, you, you, don't, you don't belong here. And then just, she seemed so cocky about it. Um, so, yeah, I don't, one second. Uh, I don't... I don't know. Maybe maybe it just was the way she said it, the the cockiness of it, that just made me feel like she was wrong. But when I, you know, after afterwards, I really thought about it. I'm like, she kind of does have a point. Like, to a cop, I could understand why this consultant looking into a friend of yours, it makes sense why she was upset. But the way that she addressed the problem, the you know, first of all, looking into Watson the way she did and the way she was talking to her, just being a total jerk about it, it kind of, you know, you know those people who they are right uh, when they're in, a, in an argument or in a debate with somebody, they're right, but they're such a jerk about it and so, oh, well, I'm much better than you, that it makes them seem like they're wrong because of the way they present it, because of the tone of their voice, all that stuff. Uh, I'm sure you've dealt with people like that because they're... There are a lot of people in this world exactly like that. And I sometimes act like one of those people because I've got the camera. I'm like, I've got the power. I'm right. You're wrong. Comment all you want. You'll always be wrong. But in this case, obviously, it's just an act. Uh, but there are a lot of people <laughs> who are just like, I'm right. You're wrong. Nothing you can say can convince me. And it's just like, I don't. Yeah, you're right. But who cares? You're being a total douchebag about it. Anyway. Uh, the way it ends, though, is very nice. She, uh, Holmes is talking to her about it and says, well, you know, the two cops that got into an argument last year, you know how they resolved it. And ultimately she goes, finds her at the gym. She's, like, you know, working on a punching bag. And she's just like, you know, there's a boxing match here for charity. Why don't you and I get in the ring, raise some money? She's like, well, if you want to go, ring's right there. And it's just... You just know, and I kind of wish they had showed it just because there are a lot of people in shows right now, in several different shows, that I really want them to get punched in the face so bad, and 
if you're watching other shows, you probably have several people that you would also like to see get punched in the face. Well, she was one of them. She was one of them. I was just like, please hit her in the face. 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 And then they finally, she finally decides, yeah, okay, let's go. We're going to fight it. And I'm just like, yes, I get to. And then they cut to the apartment, and she's icing her hand. I'm just like, oh, I wanted to watch. I wanted to see the douchebag get hit in the face. Um, but, you know, she, <laughs> it's funny because Holmes says, you know, we, we need to work on your uh, fighting technique because you let her get too many punches. And she's like, yeah, but I got the last one, and that's all that matters. So I'm just like, yeah, go watch it. Um, so I don't know where this is going. Either she has pissed this woman off even more, or she's earned her respect. I don't know. Uh, the lady playing this cop, though, I really do like. I've seen her in several different shows, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Lie to Me, um, and a couple other ones. And she's she's an actress I really do, I, I do enjoy. Uh, so hopefully they do bring her back, and hopefully next time she's less of a douchebag. But we'll see. Uh... One other thing that I absolutely have to mention, because I was laughing about it for a good three minutes, I had to pause and laugh so I didn't miss anything on the show. They they start off with Holmes and Watson, and they're in handcuffs, and they're trying to uh, pick out of them because the people selling them are like, these are you know unpickable locks. And while they're in them, uh, Watson gets a call that leads to the case. And so Holmes like scooches over in his chair and then breaks out and they're talking about how her ringtone is set just specifically to annoy Holmes. She's like, what, you still haven't figured out my passcode to change the ringtone yet? And so later Holmes gets back from, I think it's her, I can't remember, oh yeah, she was talking to her friend uh, that works at the hospital. This is when she finds out about Officer Cortez and she gets back. And Friday is blaring in the stereo upstairs. And I'm just like, is, that's Friday. What the heck? What is going on? And so she gets up there and she, she asks him, what are you doing? He's watching all the video cameras. He's like, well, they don't have audio, so I thought I'd just, you know, i fill it with a bunch of music. And he said, since you chose a ringtone that I don't enjoy, I thought I'd fight fire with fire. She's like, Friday? Really? And it turns it off. He's like, yes, there's another song that... And uh, piques my interest as a detective. The song, it's a mystery about dogs and who might have let them out. I'm just like, <laughs> that was, oh my gosh. And because one of the funniest things about it is that Sherlock Holmes talking about who let the dogs out and that term and that tone of, it was just, it was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. I died laughing. It was great. <laughs> it was. Oh, it's a mystery about dogs and who might have let them out. Oh, absolutely brilliant. And that's one of that is one of the benefits of having a show like this, Sherlock Holmes in modern New York. That's the type of jokes you get to have. Those are the type of jokes that you won't see anywhere else except in this show because it's Sherlock Holmes and he's living in modern day New York and it's brilliant. Uh, so. Maybe that didn't make you laugh as hard as it did me, but God, I was dying. That was great. I, I had to record that just so I could watch it again and again. Anyway, so, like I said, great case. Uh, really showed the heart of the show and how logic is the main point. Clue after clue after clue leads to the end. Um, there, if there ever is a pointless clue, Sherlock Holmes almost always negates it, you know, they, they, they're following the lead and they get to something that might be a clue and it's just like, nope, that's that's not where we're supposed to go. So I love that they really showed that in this episode. I love the fact that Watson got a chance to kind of stand up for herself um, and kind of, you know, there there is that possibility that they're leaving, and she talks to Holmes about this, how you know his father is the reason that they're back in the NYPD and this cop is looking into them because she has a beef with her she might find out about that and you don't know what's going to happen there if they if she's able to dig that up um uh, and kind of show you know maybe, maybe take it to the news i don't know so there there is potential for that to take a worse turn than it already has um but like i said we'll see maybe maybe putting her in her place was all it took but most of the time that only works with guys with with girls 
most <laughs> they don't ever really fight it out, and if they do, it generally doesn't end well. <laughs> at, at least from what I've seen, um, and that's like helping my dad coach a, the women's soccer team at Gordon. It's like they're a college team, and he talks about how coaching guys is so much easier because if they have an issue, they like yell at each other and fight it out, and that's it. They're done. But with girls, it's like they don't talk about it, and they just kind of let it fester, and eventually it becomes a problem to where the team doesn't even want to play together anymore. Now, obviously, not going to say it's all girls because not all girls are like this, but generally when you're dealing with with girls and women they don't generally fight their problems out they they it's not a typical thing uh, occasionally it does happen but i don't know i feel like the fact that watson beat her in a fight will only make it worse like it's gonna hurt her pride and i don't know we'll see we'll see uh, i'm excited to see where this is going let me know what you think in the comments i'll see you at the next review peace out